they just say the most awful stuff. Yes. Horrible, horrible stuff. Yes. Vile. Yes. And, uh, you know, point the blame wow. at every country around the world other than China. But, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs from Taiwan, I love this quote. It says, don't worry about China getting upset at you. When they get upset at you, that means you're doing something. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, that's that's a very good uh, point. So is that the end of our soft power? I mean, uh, what am I saying? End of our Wumao point. Okay, so we're going to move into worldview. I think we'll just have an extended Yamcha. Sure. What do you think? Okay, worldview. All right, this is where we talk about what's happening in the world, specifically with regards to China. It's kind of like what's new, with a bit more of an international focus. You know what I'm saying? Still right. doing the intro, eh? Got to do it, man. That's what it. it's all about, on right? One eleven. Yeah. So, um, China misquotes the UN doesn't issue correction. All right, so for those of you who don't know, the United Nations kind of fell into China's hands here. A bit of a trap. Um, this uh, bachelet, this is bat, miss, slash miss, bachelet. I don't really know. Bachelet, bachelet. Bachelet. Is it bachelet? Yeah. Sure it's bachelet? Well, yeah, it's French, right? I suppose so. Anyway, this um, very important UN figure went to go on a tourist visit. Not an investigative one. So it's not about investigating the claims of what's going on in Xinjiang. But she went there and they took her to Xinjiang and took her around to the tourist spots. Okay? Yeah. They just, they took, obviously, they're not going to take her to the camps. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, I didn't see any footage. Of yeah. So, anyway, they took her around. Do you think they gave her a Casio watch? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Anyway, so they took her around and um, then she got to see the region and she got to sit down and Warn have a about. have a chat have a chat about um, you know human rights basically with China uh, it completely played into China's hands because now they can say look see the UN went they to came. Xinjiang and they didn't find anything meanwhile they weren't looking for anything yeah I mean it didn't it didn't it's I'd say it's a net nothing a net nothing happened. pretty much but China tried yeah but now yeah here's here's the fun part right yeah you've got you've got the things right okay but, but basically, before you read them, I'll set it up. At the end, she makes this big speech, okay? About what she saw and all this kind of stuff. So the Chinese state media went ahead and put out to the entire country the contents of her speech. What did they say she said? This is what, what they said she said. So this is what the Chinese government says that she said. I admire the efforts and achievement China has made in the areas of poverty elimination, human rights protection, as well as realizing economic and social development. What did she actually say? She said, We will be discussing sensitive, important human rights issues, and I hope the visit will help us work together to advance human rights in China and globally. <laughs> so they just made shit up. They literally made it all up. Dude, it's like, have you ever done that thing where you have a foreign movie and you don't have subtitles? Yes, and you just make shit up, like they say funny. something in French and you're like, oh, I need to go to the bathroom or something. That's what they did, but to the UN, whatever she is, ambassador slash whatever, human rights person who went on their little tour. They represented. They force-fed lines about the poverty alleviation and that she admires Xi Jinping's efforts and the Communist Party's efforts at doing X, Y, Z. And she said nothing of the sort. And that's why, you know what? When I mean, the government of this party doesn't hear what they like to hear, they simply make up. They just make it up. Yeah. So it was just enough to get her to show up. That's yeah. all they cared about. So she was there, and now, guess what? They didn't, they didn't uh, retract or no. amend it. Everyone in China who's cut off from the real internet, by the way, now thinks that's what she said. Everybody around, especially... That's from Chile. So then it's Bachelet. Bachelet? No, I'm just talking shit now. Anyway, right, thanks. Here's the thing. Everyone, especially in the more rural places, people that don't have access to a VPN or any kind of uh, interest in, in getting over the Great Firewall of China, now think, because they read in the newspaper, they saw in the news, that the UN Bachelet woman, Bachelet, Bachelet woman, came in there and said that she admires what China's done for human rights. She admires the poverty alleviation. She admires all the stuff. The human and rights. Specifically the, yeah, the human, the human rights. rights. And guess what? They won't ever see a correction to that. They won't ever see now a counter to that. Now everyone in China thinks that's what she said and that the human rights situation in China is great. Yes. The UN acknowledged it. So your average, like, lower class person 
Milling around in China now is going to think, wow, China must be so good because the UN came in and said that we're great with human rights and we lifted everyone out of poverty and they admire us. They didn't even insinuate. No. She didn't say anything like that. She said we will be discussing <laughs> yeah. sensitive, important human rights issues right. and I hope this visit will help us work together to advance human rights in China and globally. That's what she said. Nothing of this like, I admire your poverty alleviation. Where this poverty alleviation shit needs to shut up, by the way. It's like the only thing that they can go for. And it's not even correct. Anyway, it's so annoying. So, now, the UN actually corrected them and asked them to yeah, like, change please. it. Like, hey, you know, that we didn't say that. Like, we got what we wanted, now you guys can fuck off. Yeah. Because that's, that's how they treat the UN and the rest of the world. Yeah, they're just like, we'll, we'll say whatever we'll we want. You. Yeah, we'll make up whatever we want. That's what they do, lie to their own population. Incredible stuff. It was yeah. actually just a slap in the face. Mistake yeah. from the beginning. The UN the way, should not have done this. No, and it's they, they were used. But just be careful if you're reading any media. She and the UN didn't say anything like that. No. <laughs> so no. don't read that Global Times or something. No, 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 anyway. no. Yeah. So we just had to put that in there because it's absolutely ridiculous. Yes. Um, we have to uh, correct Elon Musk here. Not just correct. Can we? Can, what? You know when we warn you guys about <laughs> stuff, right? I know there's a lot of Elon fanboys. We're not Elon haters. No, we're, we're nothing of the sort. But you got to be realistic, and you can never blindly. If you're one of those people that's like, no, Elon's great. He loves going to protect freedom of speech, blah, blah blah. And you put blinders on like this, you're doing what the Chinese government does with their own propaganda. Sure. Unfortunately, and the problem is, Winston, I've been warning you over and over again about what he's done to show his support for the Chinese government, to uh, open up freaking car dealerships in Xinjiang during a genocide. Yes. Right, current genocide Yes, right now. current, right now. Praising the Chinese government, on, not only on Twitter, but in public, right? Like in his relationships with people. And then doubling down on working with China for future manufacturing stuff when people are trying to pull away from this genocidal regime. Yeah. And so... When you constantly praise him and say, no, that's not the case, he's totally gonna change his mind on China and stuff. I remember I went on Twitter and I saw a lot of people that were adding us and like quoting us and stuff saying like, you guys are right. Look at, can you yeah. read this quote? Okay, he said, <clears throat> few seem to realize that China is leading the world in renewable energy generation and electric vehicles. Whatever you may think of China, this is simply a fact. Elon Musk, shut the fuck up. Sure. Because, <laughs> You know what China actually leads the world in is coal usage. <laughs> yes. So you can renew all you want, mm -hmm. even though we've seen proof of them turning on wind turbines with electricity, by yeah, the way. Yeah, to make them spin. To make them spin. But let's just use your stupid piece of shit fact and just mm. take it for, for what you say it is and say it's true, mm -hmm. right? About this, Elon, you're wrong. You're so damn wrong. China not only uses the most coal, but is using more coal and is signed on for more coal usage and production. Sure. So what, do you, what does it matter if you're using renewable stuff as sure. well as that? Yeah. You're, they're doubling down on using pollutants and yeah. CO, increasing carbon dioxide emissions. I mean, what, what is, it, this is just a short-sighted thing to say, right. okay? So it's kind of like, um, Let's say that uh, I throw trash on the ground, a lot of trash. I throw tons of trash on the ground, right? Yes. But um, I throw so much trash on the ground that I throw more trash on the ground than my, all my neighbors combined, okay? In yes. fact, I fill up the whole neighborhood with trash. But then I decided, okay, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to start recycling the cans out of the trash. Yes. Okay? So I go and pick up all the cans. Now, the neighborhood, they say, wow, this guy this, recycles this guy. more cans yeah. than anyone else in the neighborhood. Right. But... I also litter more than anyone else, and I destroy the entire place because everything else I throw is just terrible plastic shit that can't be recycled. That's what's going on here. He's saying, look, they recycle the most cans. <laughs> yeah. You know, it doesn't matter if they do a lot of this if the other stuff they're doing basically just negates that it, stuff. It cuts it off. Like, yeah. you can say, this is, to me, okay, you can say, let's just say this is true. Hmm. Okay, it's true, but the other side of things is completely ignored. It's omission it's by design, right? Yeah. He's doing this on purpose, lying Look, by omission. You can build the biggest solar generating plant. You can build the biggest hydroelectric dam. You can build all these things. First of all, building them is devastating to the environment. Yes. The amount of bullshit that has to be done to build these things, as far as like just concrete and generating this and that, destroying the land, doing whatever you need to do. That's a huge thing. But then, 
The power that you need to actually build it as well generates huge amounts of waste and coal usage and all that. But you're doing all of that, and on top of that, you're increasing your coal power plants at the same time. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. What China's doing is devastating. If you're using renewable energy yeah. to try to mitigate coal usage, then great. But China is using more coal. Yeah, a lot more. So what are you talking about? Yeah. It, it's wrong. It's like a dude who rolls coal. Yeah. You know, he's got a big diesel truck and he's rolling coal, but then he puts a solar panel on the roof to power his radio. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so he's like, oh, look, I'm using solar yeah. power for this. But that's meanwhile, he's rolling coal and burning out. That needs to be a visual representation that we'll <laughs> use in the next episode. If you guys want to post on the subreddit. Yeah, yeah Elon Musk's got like a magnifying yeah. glass to the solar panel. Meanwhile, there's smoke belching out the back um, of his diesel truck. That's a good truck. political cartoon. Yeah, definitely. So, um, I think there's a, there's also an analogy here that most people don't pay attention to is that China keeps getting lauded as this green you know, they're planting a new uh, planting forest, trees blah, blah. yeah but then you you know this used by propaganda points people like Elon Musk will go out there and talk about how China is amazing because they're planting so many trees as well right and then it's just conveniently ignored that it's monoculture yes and China is doing monoculture which is effectively destroying huge swaths of the environment yeah. in in hurting and displacing people and their farms, and their water supply, and all of this stuff just to fill a quota to say they, they're doing desertification, they're reversing desertification. Yeah, because I don't know if you guys realize this, but planting trees is not good for the environment if you do it wrong. If you do it wrong, yeah, you it's great yeah. if you do it correctly. You know, that's the whole point. Like, you know, you've got native species and you have a native ecosystem, but if you just go out there and be like, we have to plant like so many acres of trees, in a year or whatever and you just plant in the same the tree quota. yeah and you're planting it incorrectly and it actually ends up using up whatever ground water is there and just i've know. never seen anyone actually pull this like criticism out because no one could do investigative journalism there yeah but i'm telling you when i lived in the desert region of china yeah and i had students that would go out there and they'd get brownie points and they'd get all kinds of bonuses and stuff uh, within the chinese government going to do volunteer uh reverse desertification work. yeah in the Telemachon Desert as well as the Gobi Desert by planting monoculture trees. Yeah. What they would come back and say is that, oh, it's weird, a lot, we go out there with this big government entourage, take photos and they plant all these trees and stuff. And it's really weird. It's like these little saplings in the middle of this desert, right? Yeah. And they're like, it's weird because all the local farmers are super mad at us and they throw stuff at us. And I, I'm looking into it. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Sure. It turns out, like you said, the water table's being used up in an already desert area sure. where people are really trying to eke out a living yeah. by doing very small farms, right? Yeah. You have little apple orchards, you have little uh, little farms that are growing very small amounts of crops just to get by. Sure. And then you will have this government mass de uh, reverse des desertification project comes in with a billion freaking saplings yeah. that sucks up everything. And the government may water them for a while, yeah. but then after that, it's just up to the people to deal with it. Even that. watering them in those kind of desert yeah. areas, it takes away precious water resources from whatever, you know, the reservoirs and stuff. There's whole towns yeah. and cities that are, don't have enough water anymore. Yeah. And the government says, well, Bad luck for you. You got to always look at. Yeah. You got to look past the headlines because yeah. it's very easy be, to be trapped in when you hear it. Like, oh, China's leader in renewable energy. Right. You know, and you think, wow, isn't that amazing? Isn't that great? That's what the Chinese government is doing this yes. for. Yes. They don't give a shit. They're doing this so oh, that they can get shit. those headlines. Yeah. So they will build this massive thing, very wasteful, very badly managed. The waste uh, management will be terrible on right. that thing. They'll end up really destroying the environment in the process of doing it. But they get away with it, they get that lovely headline, and then it's whatever, and they just leave it off. My, my be all and end all, well said, my be all and end all about, about this is that you can be, you can like Elon Musk for what he does, you can like Tesla and do all this kind of stuff, but don't put blinders on to how much he sucked off the Chinese government. Sure. And it's so bad because it's damning. You get people that will look at this tweet or whatever he says, like it's like it's from the Bible. Sure. Like it's freaking gospel. And, and then they don't look yeah. into it after that. And government and decisions are made based on yeah. things like this because rich people can go out there and say something important and then people's eyes get off the real issue. Uh, here's the thing about Elon Musk. He's a fantastic businessman. He's sure. obviously a very important person. He's the richest man in the world and all that, but he doesn't understand China. No. He really doesn't. No. He really no, absolutely, absolutely doesn't understand Remember his China. quote about uh, like, oh, Americans are lazy and don't work, not like the hardworking Chinese people. Meanwhile, the China has one of the lowest 
per productivity rates per capita, like per, yeah. per hour of work. Number two, yes, the hours are tough and a lot of that work is on the Chinese people's hard working backs, yeah. but that's basically glorified slave labor. So he's saying slave labor is good. Yes. Anyway, fact of the matter is he really doesn't understand China well enough to be making comments like this, unfortunately. No. And people follow him around like a, like a godlike figure. And they're like, oh, Elon Musk used this yeah. piece of toilet paper. I'm right. going to invest in stocks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Got to watch out. You can't take his word when it comes to China. That's I can't say about other things because that's no. not that's it's not our wheelhouse. Talking about but when, when it's China is involved, he makes the wrong calls all the time. It's something we can safely say he's wrong about yeah. almost every single time China comes up. Yeah. And it just pisses me off. Yeah. It's, anyway. I'm not even invested in like Elon. I don't care that much. Yeah. But when this kind of stuff, it shows how you can turn public perception. That's such a stupid wrong. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway. Now let's get on to the uh, Tiananmen Square thing for a bit here. Um, this is kind of the official narrative. Do you want to read what this? this yes. Yeah, so this is this a tanky is... talking point. Yeah. But what this is is a, a convenient okay. English translation of what you would see as the official narrative in China. Yeah. And that is Tiananmen Square when they ran over students with tanks, killed thousands of people in the streets, uh, when the army came in and killed their own citizens for protesting yes. the communist government of China, yeah. um, and asked for more transparency, all the demands that they made. What they're, uh, what they're talking about is that, number one, it didn't exist, and when it does exist, like when people do find out about it and it comes up, that it was warranted, and those people that they killed were actually terrorists, yeah. right? So this says, uh, we remember the PLA soldiers who sacrificed their lives defending the country against domestic terrorism on June 4th, 1989. And this is what you'll see with the pro-authoritarian people that deny Tiananmen Square, kind of like Holocaust deniers. Yeah. You get these people that will go out there and say it didn't happen, and if it did, like, only the bad guys were killed. They killed bad students that were actually trying to... Were, it was a CIA color revolution, mm -hmm. or it was people that just wanted to cause shit, right? Yeah. So it's warranted that the PLA killed them. You know, th there were some um, soldiers who did get killed during that whole thing. It's true, they really yeah. were. But by a couple of students with Molotov cocktails or whatever the hell they had versus tanks and automatic oh. rifles, it's yeah. no, not a fair fight. no fair fight going on there. Didn't and you know, fight. afterwards the, the, the people that participated in this even got like a commemorative watch. Yeah. You know, the they soldiers, it's, like it's shit, a piece of shit watch. Yeah. Probably have. Yeah. Probably have. Yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter, these um, not very brave soldiers who just killed a bunch of unarmed students, unless you consider the or something being armed or whatever um people are putting this kind of thing out to like uh commemorate those poor soldiers those poor soldiers that can mow down their own citizens it's disgusting look when you get into the tanky world which tankies for those who don't know are these people that love authoritarianism and they love suffering especially dead, dead kids they love that for some reason it's like because oh, it furthers their agenda yeah. Anyway, horrible people. Horrible. You go down this rabbit hole of these people. They are so twisted and disgusting. Oh, it's really gross. It's a lot of narcissists as well. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much every single tanky's got narcissistic disorder, personality disorder. Anyway, this is the kind of crap they put out. We just had to let you know it's disgusting. What we need to remember is that the students who stood out and actually took that, had the courage to stand up to the Chinese government, you know, they, they really need to be remembered. Because they were stamped out, and this actually was the end of courage in China. After this happened, after this happened, yeah. And this also, after this uh, Tiananmen Square uh, massacre happened, the Chinese government made it illegal for large gatherings. Yep. They upped the surveillance. This of is where everything changed. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was after this that uh, pretty much it was not possible to get together and have any kind of demonstrations mm -hmm. or protests or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. So it put an end to that. And right. it was really the iron fist of the, the Communist Party of China uh, grasping the, the nation. And yes. unfortunately, there's been no way to escape. Yes. You know, ever since then. Anyway. We just want to remind people that there is a fantastic memorial in yes. California. If you go out west, you can find in the desert somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> it's Yermo. Yermo. <laughs> yeah. You have to go all the way out in the desert and you'll yes. find this... Uh, Massive monuments. Yeah, we actually have uh, some. Six for you. We went there just to remind yeah, you. It's the Liberty Sculpture Park. That's right. Yeah, it's Liberty Sculpture Park, and it's. We went out there two, three years ago now. 
yeah, yeah, about three years ago. So he's got 6'4". Yeah. This is yeah. where, by the way, 